everyone, it's Tracy here, back with another video. I'm starting with some strips of Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. I have four different strips, and I am just coloring those in with my Ganze Tombi watercolors. So the first color I'm using is number 61, which is Cornflower Blue. And I'm using a lot of water with these because I really want them to be saturated. Um, and I'm doing this kind of like an ombre effect, so it's going to go from lighter to darker. So my next color is number 63, which is Parisian Blue. Kind of like a really bright color, and you can see how dark that is when there's a lot of ink on there. But it really fades out when you add more water. The third color I'm using is number 66, which is menthol violet. And that's an even darker blue than the Parisian blue. And then the fourth and final color is number 67, which is deep blue. So after I finished coloring those in, I took my heat tools just so I could heat them because I'm going to die cut from them and I wanted them to be completely dried before I did that. And you can see there I'm leaving a little white space on each end but that's okay because the piece is not going to be that long so those are going to be cut off. So I'm using my stitch scallop border. This is the largest one from Lawn Fawn. And I'm just taping that into place and then I will run that through my cuddle bug. And so I'm just going to show you this first one, but then I'm going to do the same thing for the other three. And then the piece I'm going to adhere those onto, I'm first going to color the background with the Broken China Distress Ink. So I'm just using my small blending tool and just blending that color on there. You could use a piece of blue cardstock if you wanted to, but I really like the different kind of like more marbled look, I guess, that you get with the Distress Ink for my sky background. And you could also use different colors too in your background, but I am just using the one color. So now I can go ahead and adhere my scallops, which is going to be water, is what it's going to represent. So I'm starting with the darkest color and then adhering that on to my cardstock piece. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other three except I will just lower it a little bit so that it looks like the different waves of the water. And then for my third piece, I'm going to move it slightly just so that the scallops don't line up. So you'll see there will be a little bit of extra on both sides. And then I'll go ahead and adhere the final piece, which is the lightest cornflower blue color. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess pieces, which really I wouldn't need to do because I'm actually going to die cut a rectangle from this piece anyway, but I just thought it was easier so I didn't have to run all of that extra material through my cuddle bug. Alright, so I have the stitched rectangles from Simon Says Stamp, and I'm taking the second largest rectangle die, and you can see it fits right in there. I cut it so that it was slightly bigger than that. I'll adhere that into place and then I'm going to die cut that out. This is just because I wanted the die cut or the stitched look around the edge. And then I'm going to take the largest rectangle and die cut that out of a piece of Lawn Fawn pattern paper that's from the Pint Size Beach Side collection. Alright, so I'll just run that right through my cuddle bug, and then that is going to be the backing for my water piece. And then I am using the Lawn Fawn Year 5 stamp set. This is one of the little mini stamps, which are super affordable. So I'm going to stamp the present and the little otter 
on a piece of Coordination's 110 pound cardstock, and I'm using my Tuxedo Black Memento ink because I'm going to be coloring this in with Copic markers. And that is just the ink that I prefer to use when I color with my Copics because it doesn't bleed or anything like that. So I had to ink that up a little bit more because I forgot the tail. Then I'll go ahead and stamp that down, and then I used my heat tool to make sure that the ink was completely dried before I started coloring it. So I'm coloring in the entire otter with my E23, which is hazelnut. It's a light brown color. And then I'm going to add a little bit of shading with the E25, which is Caribe Coco, I believe it's how it's pronounced. And I just like to do this on some of the edges and where there would be more shading on the otter. And then I'll go ahead and blend both of those together with my hazelnut once again. And then I'm going to do some simple coloring with the present. I'm using the B12, which is ice blue, to color in the present. And then for the ribbon, I'm using a YR68, which is just called orange. And then I went ahead and fussy cut those out. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and cut around the otter's little hand. And I'm doing this so that I can slide the present under there so that it looks like he's really holding it. And then I'll go ahead and adhere that into the water piece. I'm just making sure that I cut that so that the present fits in there. And I'm going to add a little bit of my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to the back of the otter. And then I'll slip that in. I'll kind of tuck it in between a few of the waves so that the water is in front of him. And then I'm going to add a little bit of my Mono Multi Glue onto the back of the present as well. And then I'll slide that right under his arm so that it looks like he's holding it. Now I can go ahead and stamp my sentiment so that says have an utterly great birthday and that's from the same set. So I used all three stamps from that set. And then I'll stamp that with my Tuxedo Black Memento ink. And I'm going to stamp that right in my sky up there. And then I'm going to take a piece of May Arts Natural Twine. And I'm just going to cut that a little bit larger than that rectangle piece so that it can wrap around the back. And then I'll take two pieces of scotch tape so that I can tape both of the ends um, in the on the back of my white cardstock. And I just find that this is easier, the easiest way to tie a bow. Um, that way you, you're, it doesn't slip or anything like that. And I don't, I don't have any trouble tying bows this way. And then I'll tie another piece of my twine, or cut another piece of my twine off. And then go ahead and tie that bow right on the left side of my rectangle. And then I went, and made, went ahead and made sure that the loops were even and trimmed off the excess. So now I'm going to go ahead and adhere my card together. I have my pattern paper that I am adhering to a white A2 size card base. And then I'll add some adhesive to the back of my watercolor piece. And then adhere that right into place. So there's not too much dimension on this besides the bow, so it would be a really easy one to send in the mail. And then that is my finished card for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys back here next time. Bye!